Welcome back to Surviving and Thriving, where we share with you the things that we have learned as we have transitioned our family from struggling to survive sickness and to disease into thriving and living life to the fullest right smack dab in the midst of it. And we share these things in the hopes that something that we share with you will help you, enlighten you, and encourage you as you transition your family from struggling to survive sickness and disease into thriving and living life to the fullest, right smack dab in the midst of it. Now, no matter what you go through in life, especially in sickness and disease. It does not matter what you're going through in your health. I don't care if you're paraplegic. I don't care if you're bedridden. I don't care if you're in a hospital. Whatever the situation is, okay? It doesn't matter what the situation is. If you are a mother, if you are a father, whatever you're going through does not negate your positioning nor your authority. Period. Point blank. Even, I tell my kids, right? I tell them all the time. I said, I don't care if you're 80 years old. I don't care how old you get. I will always be your mother. And I'm due the respect and I'm going to get the respect until Jesus call you, me, us both home, right? Until God, until Jesus return. I'm going to always be the mom and I'm due the honor and the respect of that. And you're going to give it to me, right? So if I'm due the honor and respect of that, which is true, right? And that's my positioning throughout all of time, right? That also means that no matter what I go through in my health, I don't relinquish that positioning. I don't relinquish what it means to be a mom. I don't give it up just because of my situation, okay? My health issue, my health status, your health issue, your health status does not determine your identity and it does not determine your positioning as a parent. And so you don't relinquish it. You hold it down, okay? You stand flat-footed, you take your stand and you maintain your ground. So what that means is that even if your children are bathing you, even if your children are feeding you regardless of the age, they can be three, they can be six, they can be 10, they can be 12, they can be 16, they can be 30, they can be 50. It don't matter what their age is. They can be tending to you, taking care of you, doing everything for you. You are still the parent in that situation. Right? Now, you may have to listen to them a little bit because they're doing some taking care of you, but it doesn't change the fact that they still need your love. They still need your guidance. They still need your prayers. They still need your assurance. They still need your wisdom. They still need you to teach them and to train them and walk them through life, regardless of the age, regardless of the stage. Okay. Here's this. I think, I think it tends to be a little bit harder when your children are younger and they're having to take care of you. But they're in those developmental stages. Now, from what I hear, because I don't have kids in their 50s, I ain't even reached mine yet, right? From what I hear, it doesn't matter. At every age, at every stage, even my mother who's lost her mom, she still needs her mom, right? I still need my mom, and my children still need me. But I do understand what it is to raise kids from infancy on up to where my kids are now, um, while going through health issues. Even though my children had to feed me, bathe me, <laughs> give me medications, roll me over, comb my hair, brush my teeth, wash my face, take care of me, right? I still had to teach them because I homeschooled. I still had to train them and establish character within them and correct them, okay? It does not matter what you're going through. You still have a duty, a responsibility, and an obligation, and you are the parent in that situation. You don't want to get things turned upside down. You don't want your kid thinking because they're feeding you, so now they're the mother in the situation. No, you're always the mom in that situation, right? You're always the dad in that situation. There are times where you're going to be going through health things and you may need to focus in and buckle down. And so you're not thinking so much about telling them to go clean their room. 
you're not thinking so much about, you know, <clears throat> asking about stuff that's dealing with the house. And that's okay. You need to focus in to get through the fight that you're in at that time. But no matter how serious the crisis is or how heavy what you're going through is, right? Your children still need to know that you love them. They still need your assurance. They still need your ear. They still need your care and attention. They need your wisdom, your guidance, your understanding, your discernment, your know-how, your prayers. Your children still need you. Now, I'm going to give you a little secret that I found in life. Now, it may be different for other people's personalities, but I'm going to tell you what I learned in my situation and maybe something can help you, right? One of the things that I've learned is that when you have a very clear understanding of purpose, a very clear understanding of your role in your family, and when you know that your children need you and they need those things from you, it puts a fight in you. It did in me. And it can help you to push and make it through some crucial, critical times. Help you to get through them valleys of the shadow of death, right? And so there were times when I would be bedridden or in a hospital and I may not have the energy or strength. I may not be able to open my eyes and look at them, but I can listen and I can say, mm-hmm. And I can say, I love you, baby. And I can say, no, mama, don't think you need to do that one. And I can also say, uh-uh, I don't wanna hear that no more. Correct that behavior, right? It did not relinquish the fact that I was a mother. My children still needed me. I'm gonna tell you something else. In those situations and in those positionings where it was a fight to be here or it was just hard, the suffering was just hard, right? I still needed my mama. I still needed my mama to say, baby, you're going to be okay. You're going to make it through this. And there were times, y'all, where I didn't know if I was going to make it and I really felt like I was slipping out of here and everything said I was slipping out of here. And the grown me was crying, saying, I want my mama and my daddy. So, understand that regardless of what you're going through or how you're going through it, that your children need you. And you still have a lot to offer. And they may be wiping your face. They can be wiping your backside. But why they wiping, share who you are. Share your love. Share your encouragement. Because if you were a person out there that didn't get what you thought you needed from your parents or your guardian, then you know how much it is that your kids need it. And if you were one who did get it and you had a great family and a great upbringing, then you know the impact that your parents had in your life. And you need to make sure you're that for your kids. So no matter where you are, no matter what the situation is, it's not always going to be easy, right? But if you can muster it up, you make sure that you give to your kids and you do not relinquish your position. Your position is yours. Your situation and circumstances does not determine that identity and it does not determine your positioning. When you gave birth, you had a position that was established for always and never, never relinquish your spot. Hope something in there was helpful for you. Remember, in all things, at all times, do you be you. Until next time, bye.